Hi, I'm uh, Vinny McHugh. I'm a senior uh, solution architect with uh, Comsys, and welcome to this Comsys whiteboard. Um, what I'd like to talk about today is uh, is VAI, uh, VMware vSphere uh, API array integration. Um, so basically, what that allows us to do is to take a lot of uh, functionality and offload it onto the uh, onto the storage array, uh, freeing up private resources at your at your vSphere uh, host level. Um, one of the great things about this at the moment is uh, that VMware have very recently made this available in a standard licensing where previously it was only available in the enterprise licensing. So I would encourage everyone that has the correct licensing that hasn't enabled it already to certainly enable it because there's a lot of benefits which we'll, which we'll go through. So the first primitive I'd like to talk about, the primitives are broken out into the uh, there's block primitives for block storage arrays, there's uh, NAS primitives for your NFS and your NAS storage arrays, and there's some template venue in provision of primitives as well. We'll go through each one, no, no specific order, um, uh, and we'll kick off with the uh, with one of the block primitives called xcopy. So, traditionally, before VAI, if we wanted to copy this data, uh, uh, these blocks of data, we're in an array from one location to another, maybe it's uh, we're cloning, maybe we're deploying from template, maybe it's a storage uh, storage remotion. Your data mover, your software data mover uh, in your VM kernel, we have to send these reads up here, and then they would have to write them to the new location. Time consuming and puts a lot of extra load on the actual ESX host. It's not a deal. With VAI and XCOPY, we can eliminate the host from the operation and instead it will send an XCOPY command to the storage array. The storage array must support VAI, of course. And what that will do, it will say take this logical block address to this logical block address and everything in between copy over over here. This is then known within the array there's no extra load put in the SX host and it's done a lot quicker. So the benefits here things such as CPU cycles, um, things such as uh, maybe SCSI, uh, SCSI commands in your in your HPA um, and maybe a uh, DMA as well, um, is uh, you're going to have uh, a reduction in here. A similar primitive uh, from a NAS point of view is called full file clone, which essentially does similar very similar functionality on a NAS array and NAS data stores. If it's a unified uh, array, for example. Um, Whereas you can you, you can do your, your, your copies, your cloning, your, your one thing that the block will allow you to do, we mentioned storage remotion. You cannot do storage remotion in your uh, with a full file clone. Um, it will um, you can do a code uh, a, a code migration. Okay. So the next two primitives I'd like to talk about is essentially is a. Uh, the block one is right, same, or zeros. There's a similar one as well called reserve space for NAS, which we'll also mention, which allows native snapshot support. So for right, uh, right same for, for zeros, let's take our host again, and our storage array, and now on our storage array, we have a VM, VMDK, which is 100 gigabytes in size, but maybe only 5% of that, or sorry, 5 gig of that, we'll say, is actual data. If I want to copy this to another location on the array, maybe clone it, I'm writing 95 gig of zeros. Time consuming, waste of resources, inefficient. If I'm using the uh, VA, VAI command, what it will do, 
the VM kernel will send um, a list of zeros down to the storage array where the zeros are. So when you're actually doing that copy, it just copies the, the data. So it's just data being sent across uh, and the zeros can be filled in by, by the array itself. This is really useful if you're doing eager zeros uh, for the array formatting, writing any zeros onto the array and can save you, can save you a lot of time. Um, from a, 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 reserve, a, a reserve space point of view, uh, again this is for NFS. Typically with, uh, with NAS, we can't, um, we can't do eager zeros or lazy zeros, so that we can't reserve that space. Traditionally we couldn't and write out zeros to that space in the NAS environment. With this primitive, we can do that with reserve space. We can say to the NFS, uh, uh, they'll store and reserve 100 gigabytes, for example, uh, and then we get two options. We get the lazy zero, so it'll reserve the space and it won't actually write out zeros until we actually go to make the write, the actual write, and it does it just before that, or eager zero, where it will uh, it'll reserve the space and it'll write the zeros uh, uh, beforehand. So for lazy, we have flash, we also have flash um, pre initialization. And that's eager zero. One thing very much so lazy zeros, fine. With eager zeros, it will use the software data mover. Uh, if you're under reserved space, it won't use, it won't offload it to the array. So it's worth bearing that in mind as well. Okay. Um, the next, uh, the next primitive, which we'll just cover off quickly as well, is um, it's fast file clones, which is a NAT primitive. Uh, uh, what that gives us is for for native snapshots. So it's great for things like VDI, even vCloud Director. Uh, it's very good. Uh, um, good for as well. It, uh, it links in with the, the View Composer uh, array integration, the VCI as well. Um, I can really speed up uh, uh, when, we're, when we're creating our spinning out in clones because it offloads all that onto the, onto the storage array. Okay, just to, uh, to complete the, uh, the, the NAT primitives, um, one of the final ones is extended statistics. Um, so, what this allows you to do if you have a uh, so trying to understand how much space uh, a VMDK actually has and reporting that information back was traditionally a, a problem. Um, so for example, if you had 100 gig, uh, can provision maybe 10 VMDK for example, but we're only using 10 gigabits, this traditionally wasn't reported properly. With the extended statistics, the, uh, the, the, the array, the storage array with the uh, NFS, We'll be able to give more uh, more accurate information. So if it's only actually using 10 gigabytes, this can report this back, uh, this information back to vSphere for from a reporting point of view. Um, the final um, block primitive would be ATS, uh, Atomic Test and Set. which is basically a new locking mechanism to replace SCSI reservations. So anybody familiar with SCSI reservations? It may be from the uh, from problems you've had with it in the past, locking uh, locking loans and so on. So traditionally in the past, if we take some VMs, and they need to do a metadata update, for example, this VM would lock the entire VMFS data store. This here would lock it while this does this metadata update. And if this was trying to do a, an update at the same time, it would be blocked and locked out. And you had problems where it wouldn't release the locks, for example, and it could require reboots. Uh, and it was generally problematic and wasn't the most efficient. Um, so now what they've replaced that with is ATS. And what ATS will allow you to do is so it will go to the array, from an array here, and it will redirect it down to here. And what will it, it will not lock the entire uh, the entire data store. It will just lock the blocks, which it's uh, it's updating. 
So if, if multiple uh, VMs need to do an update at the same time, the actual storage array with the ATS primitive can accommodate that. No problem. Um, so very nice feature and is, a, is definitely a nice upgrade over, over SCSI reservations. Uh, the final primitives one to, which I'd like to mention is the TIN provisioning uh, primitives. So which there's a few. Um, there is TIN provision um, stun for example. So if one of the problems of using a TIN provisioned uh, data store underneath is you could be running out of space and the, uh, the, the, the virtual machines or the, sorry, the, the ESX hosts aren't actually aware that the actual space in the underlying storage array is, uh, is nearly run out. It thinks it has more space because it's, you may be over allocated on, uh, allocated on that space. So what might happen is it's, uh, once that runs out of space underneath, if the ESX array isn't aware of that, it caused very unpredictable problems, anything from proper screens of debt to spurious errors uh, uh, appearing, um, uh, and it could cause some corruptions and, and a lot of problems. So with TP uh, provisioning stun, what it will do, those VMs that are that need that extra write, they go into a frozen state. Uh, any VMs that don't need additional space, don't need to do any writes, for example, uh, they will continue on working, doing reads uh, uh, and so on. Uh, until the point that you can allocate more space, so those VMs that have more space can then resume from their frozen state and continue on working. So it's a much more consistent and reliable uh, environment, and it's a nice feature. Um, the TIM provisioning uh, uh, space threshold, again, an issue with the underlying uh, um, uh, storage array. If you over allocate it using TIM provisioned um, uh, um, uh, volumes, and you're running out of space, there was no warnings. You didn't get any warnings for VCenter, or or VCenter, for example. With the uh, space threshold warning, you now will get that warning in vSphere. So you can see uh, that you might only have 10% space left and you can actually proactively take action to alleviate that potential problem down the line. And that's, that's a nice, uh, very nice feature as well. Um, the final one then is the SCSI unmap feature, which essentially if you have your underlying uh, array, for example, um, and it's TIN provisioned, uh, and on top of it, you, you, you create new writes on top of it. So there's a volume, for example, and as you extend out that volume, it consumes the space underneath. If you then go and delete some data from here, that wasn't that dead space wasn't always reclaimed by the underlying uh, storage array. So with the uh, SCSI unmap, what it will do is it can send a message down to the array that it can now take these blocks back uh, and unallocate these blocks. It was an automated process. Um, they caused a lot of performance overhead, so it became a manual process. Um, so you, you ran it uh, manually at, at the right time. Um, also in vSphere 6, and if you have hardware version uh, 11, what it will do, you can actually do it at the guest level. So if you, uh, if you delete data at the guest level, it can reclaim that dead space at the, uh, at the storage array level. So, to round this session off, I uh, just wanted to kind of mention some of the, uh, some of the, 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 the caveats that VAI to be aware of. Um, so, for example, if you're doing, uh, say, say, for example, copies, if it's if it's RDM uh, to a non-RDM, for example, be wary. If, for example, if you're doing um, if the this, the block sizes of the source is different, block source from the destination block size. If they're not the same, they're aware. Also, if you're dealing with extents or you're dealing with sparse disks, that all needs to be taken into consideration. Um, yeah, so um, I uh, there's some great reading online on the VMware website. I encourage you to check out some of Cormac Hogan's uh, stuff. He's some great materials on that. Um, 
If you would like to find out more about this and enabling this or any more features uh, around this, uh, give us a call, give us a shout uh, uh, at Comsys. We'll be happy to to, to discuss. Um, but yeah, so thanks for listening.